Hello everyone. Welcome to the fifth video in our math review series for GRE quantitative section. Today's topic is statistics. And on GRE, statistics involves averages, median, mode, and standard deviation. Let's start with the averages, which is one of the most common type of problems you'll see on the GRE. Uh, before we go into it, GRE also likes to call averages as arithmetic mean. Arithmetic mean. Many of you would be familiar with that term also. Um, all right, so let's see what an average is. So average is simply defined as sum of all the numbers that you have in a data series. So sum of all numbers. So numbers I always shorthand like this. Divided by the total number of numbers that you have in your data series, which can be represented by n. So n is just the total number of data points, total numbers that you have. Okay. Um, a good way to shorthand this is just to have the first letters. So A for average, S for sum, and N for total numbers. So, so one thing to remember is that GRE would never ask you for for cal to calculate a simple average, right? So they would not give you these are the numbers, calculate the average. Okay. That's not how GRE operates. They would usually give you the average and ask you to find something else. So one common way that GRE tests is by using this sum, the numerator here. Okay. Very important. So if I rearrange this equation, uh, average equals sum over n, Let's solve for sum here. Sum is equal to average times the number of points. This is a very important uh, rearrangement of the average equation. Uh, many times it comes handy. The best way to, 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 to see how it's useful is to look at an example. All right, let's look at an example. Okay, so here we have one day a supermarket received a delivery of 25 frozen turkeys. So 25 frozen turkeys. If the average arithmetic mean weight of a turkey was 14.2 pounds, what was the total weight in pounds of all the turkeys? So see, over here, you, you know the number of turkeys uh, there. So that's your n, the big n, 25, right? And you know the average weight of these turkeys. So that's your average, A equals 14.2. And now it's asking for the total weight. So that's a hint to find the sum, right? So you want to find the sum, which is simply A times N. In this case, A is 14.2, N is 25. And you get, you can do this quickly in the calculator. So you'll get 355 for your answer. Okay, simple enough, straightforward question. I hope this clarifies to everyone what a sum, uh, how a sum in an average can be used. All right, let's look at another example, which takes this a step forward. Sheila took five chemistry tests during the semester, and the average of her test scores was 85. Okay, so five tests, I'll start writing the information as quickly as I read. So, so n equals five, and the average for these five tests was 85, right? Here they say average is 85. If our average after the first three tests was 83, so after the first three tests, so n equals 3, the average was 83. What was the average of a fourth and fifth test? So they want to find the average for fourth and fifth, right? Okay, uh, again, so this is where you have to use the sum. Uh, formula a couple of times. So what we can do is that for the first case here, where I have five tests and I have an average of 85, I can find the sum here. So let's say S for one. So this is five times 85. That comes out to be 425. Okay. Let's do similarly for the second set of numbers. So here I have three tests and the average is 83. So three times 83 gives me 249. Right now, I want to find the average for these two tests, four and fifth. Okay, uh, I know n is two because there are two tests here, but what's the sum here? 
but I need to find the sum here. Let's say that the sum is S3. Well, so five tests, the sum was 425. Three of those, the sum was 249. So for the two remaining, the sum is just the difference of the two earlier sums. Right? So 425 minus 249, which gives me 176. Now I can easily calculate my average to be 176 over 2, the number of tests, which comes out to be 88. That's B. Right? So this is a very typical GRE problem where the average information is, is divided into like two rounds. Let's say, you know, one round, second round, and you have to use these two info pieces of information to do something in the third round, right? Very typical uh, GRE problem. Make sure you get a really good hang of this type of question. All right, let's look at the next one, which is a quantitative comparison question. We have quantity A, the average of the integers from 0 to 12, all right? And quantity B, the average of the integers from 1 to 12. Right. Very important in these type of questions not to stay away, go into calculating the sum of these integers and then dividing by n. Um, it, it would be more efficient, it's, F, it's definitely more efficient to, to be a bit more intelligent and smart about this. So, so, so right away you can see that here your n is 13, you have 0 to 12 integer, integers from 0 to 12 and here your n is 12. So you have one extra number in column a average and that extra number is actually zero right so intuitively you can many of you would be able to to answer this that since the extra number is zero it means that the average must be higher in the in the column where uh, where there's no zero so so the answer would be b here right so zero basically doesn't add anything to the sum so so more uh, if we write the average formula is n over it's sum over n, right? Well, my n, I know it is 13, whatever the sum is here. And here the n is 12. In this. Now the key to realize is that this sum and this sum are same because um, the integer, the extra integer is zero, okay? So, so the sums are same, but your denominator is higher. So you have one more number in the denominator. It means this average would be lower than this average okay so the answer is b is greater again very crucial to not kind of go in and like do the calculation and you know, don't take out the calculator for questions like these now uh, better be better to be smarter okay another corollary to uh, corollary to this question is that whenever you have a series of numbers and they ask you to calculate the averages um, especially in the quantitative comparison question so let's say you have three four five and which is column A and column B is let's say uh, two fourths. Two four. You know, well, let's let's say we pick uh, three four six. Okay. Again, here you can do a comparison if you, if the question asks you to find the uh, find the average. You can see three and four. Three and four are same. Five. Here's six, so the average must be greater on column B. Okay, so this type of comparison would really help in speeding up, you know, speeding up your question answering skills. All right, let's look at more of these problems. All right, on Thursday, twenty of the twenty-five students in a chemistry class took a test, and the average was eighty. On Friday, the other five students took the test. And their average was 90. Okay, let's write down the information. First day, 20 students took the test. All right, 20 students took the test, and their average was 80. Average is 80. Day two, five students took the test. The average was 90. Seems like they had a proper breakfast the second day, these five. Anyways, now you want to find the average for the entire class. Average for the entire class for n would be 20 plus 5, 25. Okay. Again, average is just sum over n. So if I know I know n, if I know the sum for the entire class, I can find the average for the entire class. Well, how about I find the sum in the first case? Which would be just 20 times 80 equals 1600. What about the sum in the second case? 
which is 5 times 90, which would be 450. Okay, so well, now I have to have sum for the entire class 4 n, which is 25. So this I think is 20, 50 over 25. And that you can quickly do on the on screen calculator that will be provided on the test. It turns out to be 82. 82. Okay. This is also known, this concept is also known as a weighted average. And there are formulas that well, you can memorize. I would not recommend that. I'll just say use this sum uh, concept and just plug through it. And, uh, brute force. Let's look at the next question. All right. Okay, before we go into this question, just want to uh, talk about one concept, which basically is of speed. And uh, we all know that if you want to calculate the average speed, that's just equal to distance over time, right? Um, if I, I can write this in short abbreviation, S for speed, D for distance, D for time. Compare this to the average formula. So average is equal to sum over N. Right? So here, the sum in the average is actually distance in the speed formula, right? So I can write the speed formula. If I rearrange this formula, I can write that distance is equal to sum, speed times time. Uh, sim which is very similar to the sum of an average equal to average times n. Right? Uh, so just to point out that the speed and average is a very related thing. So here we'll do a question um, which uses the speed formula. So let's read that. Susan travels by car at an average speed of 50 miles per hour for four hours. Okay, again, let's write down the information. So speed 50 miles per hour. Uh, the short answer for this is MPH, uh, and Susan went for four hours at this speed. Okay, and then at an average, and then at an average speed of twenty miles per hour for two hours. So after that, she went two hours at twenty miles per hour. It's asking for what is her average speed in miles per hour for the entire six-hour trip. Okay, again, so you want the speed. For the entire duration, so you know need to know the distance for the entire duration, and you need to know the time for the entire duration. Well, time is simple, it's just two plus four, six hours. Distance, well, you need to find the distance here, let's say d1, and distance here, d2. So distance one would be the speed in that time period, which is 50 times the hours driven at that time period. So that will give you 250 times four is one. Or d2. Will be simply 20 times 2 equals 40. So the total distance is 240 divided by 6 will give you the average speed for the entire journey, which would be 40 miles per hour. This one. Right? Simple, very similar to averages, right? Uh, so good to know this uh, similarity between these type of questions. Uh, now let's look at a harder question, okay, which is very, you know, it's a very typical GRE problem where um, you have to go beyond just knowing the formulas. Okay, let's read this one. So it's a quantitative comparison question. It says the average of 12 consecutive odd numbers is 12. All right. Um, column A says the least possible number in the list. The least possible number in the list of these 12 consecutive odd numbers. Column B says 301. Okay, interesting question. Um, so one way to tackle this type of question is to basically say, all right, let's say 301 is the least possible number. Okay, so I say my list of 12 consecutive numbers starts at 301. So I'll have 301, 303, 305, 306, and so on and forth till I have 12 consecutive odd numbers. Now, one brute force method is to basically write down all these 12 numbers, take their average, and see if the average, how does the average compare to 312. But if the average is less than 312, then you need to 
move ahead. You can't have 301 to be the least one, right? However, if the average is greater than 312, so if the average is greater than 312, then you can have even smaller numbers than 301, right? So that's one way. And uh, if you have enough time, obviously you can go ahead and do that. But let's try to be smart about this. So the way I did this was to realize is that if I have an even number of consecutive odd numbers, so so let's say let's start with uh, let's say I have three consecutive odd numbers, so three o one, three o three, three o five. In this case, the average of these three numbers is actually the middle number. Okay, that's the average for these three numbers. Um, but I don't have so here the uh, n was three, right, which is odd. But my n is is twelve, which is even. So let's look at what happens when you have an even number of odd numbers which are consecutive okay so here n is 4 which is even now in this case what happens is that the average is the number which is in the middle of the uh, two middle numbers so 303 305 are the two middle numbers kind of and the average for these four numbers is 304 you can check that on the calculator okay um, but this is important it's basically say that if you have an even number you can pick your two middle numbers and the number in the middle of that those two numbers is the uh, is the average so how does that help us well so i can write the numbers that i have starting from 301 301 303 305 307 309 311 and now see i have six numbers here till 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 311 so one one two three four five so my average, the next number in the list is here. So my average is the number that's between these two numbers, 3, 12. Okay. Voila. That's the average that they give in the problem. Okay. So, so if I choose 301 to be the least of the 12 consecutive odd numbers, my average would be exactly 312, which means well, 301 is the least possible number in the list, which means the answer is C here. So this is definitely one of the hardest questions you'll see um, on the GRE. Um, for those who want to score above 160, you should definitely keep an eye on questions like these. Um, if you had enough time, you can always do the brute force here. You know, uh, This can probably save you a bit of time, but still, uh, will take some time to do this. Right? Um, 